holding rejection. We're holding fear. We're holding doubt and unbelief. And see, when you look in the word of God, that's why you can read it and you don't hear what God is saying. You know how people say, I read, but I just don't hear nothing. Because I got this in me, and I'm not allowing him to deal with me. Because the moment you let him deal with you, and you say, you know what, I got to repent. Because I have sinned against you. And God saying, that's what I have. Because in the book of Malachi, this is what happened. When you look at, matter of fact, before we go to Malachi, hold your hands on, hold your fingers on Malachi. I want you to look at Revelations 1 and 6. Because see, some of us don't understand who we are. We are kings and we are priests. So when you are a king and a priest, we got to understand you can't come to him any kind of way. And see, we've been so used to coming to church thinking that I can just bring my offering. I can just do what I need to do. When you look at Revelations 1, Chapter 1, look at verse 6. It says here, To him who loved us and washed us. Do y'all know how to say washed? He said, To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood has made us kings and priests. To his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So now you understand when you come before God, you're not coming before him like the average Joe Blow. You understand what I'm saying? You got to come to him as a king. So even in the natural, what do we see people do when they see kings? They bow. So why do you think we worship? We worship because we understand that we are worshiping an invisible king. Come on here. And as we worship him, because we're in the kingdom of God, we worship a king that we do not see. And he has given us orders to be a king and to be a priest. So when you go back in the Old Testament, you got to understand everybody can come to God. It will be one time a year when the people of God, the priests, will be able to walk, come on here, in the tabernacle, walk in the temple. And when he walked in there, he had a tassel. He had a rope on his ankle. And they had bales on his garments so that when he walked in there, because if he had any sin, because it was his job to walk in there on behalf of all the people. So his heart had to be right. Because if his heart would not be right, God will kill him. So when he walked in there, they'll be quiet. Because as long as they hear that bell ringing, they'll know he's good. So it was his job to go in there and to minister to God on behalf of the people. That's the Old Testament. But by Jesus dying on the cross, you don't have to have nobody to go on there on your behalf. As long as you open up your mouth and confess in your heart, now you go see him on your own. But see, we don't got lazy. And we don't got used to being dirty. We don't got used to wearing grace and mercy out that we go to God any kind of way knowing that we ain't living right, knowing that we haven't repented. We feel like we got a right to have an attitude. We feel like we got a right to cuss people out. We feel like we got a, a, re, a way to come to God any kind of way, not understanding you're a king and you're a priest. So if I'm a king and a priest, I can't go to him any kind of way. See, because when you begin to look at the Old Testament, when they went to the when they got ready to go see the priest, they would first go to the altar. The altar is the place called the softening place, the killing place. That's why we got an altar in church. Because it's where you saying, I know I ain't been right. I know God, before I ask you to pay my bills, I know I got to first ask you to deal with my heart. Amen. 
Come on. Because I'm holding unforgiveness. I'm angry. I'm mad by what's going on in my life. But before I say anything to you, I understand I got to go to the altar. Whether or not the altar is in your living room, your bedroom, your bathroom, wherever you go. You understand that you got to go to him first before you go into the bed chamber and asking him to pay your bills. But see, we don't forgot the altar and we're going straight to the throne. You ain't spent no time in worship. Worship is to help take off the layers. I've been mad. I've been upset. I've been my body been aching. I've been going through different things. See, worship is to help get you in the right place. Come on here. So God can show you. Come on here. I'm showing you your attitude so that when you come before me, you know you can't come before me with the attitude. All right now. Come on. Because you understand he's a king. But see, in the church, we're not understanding that. We understand, I just want what I want. And so when you look at Malachi 3, he said, I got a problem with my priest. He said, because they have gotten so corrupt inside. They don't got so selfish inside. They just come to me telling me what they want with no relationship. They telling me what they want with no, not asking me good morning, Holy Ghost. Not saying that you the love of my soul. Not being thankful, not being grateful. But just being a prideful people. But want what they want and don't care nothing about the king. So just imagine the state of the church. And God's saying, we crying out and saying, God, why don't we see blessings? Why don't we see this? He said, because we have become corrupt. He said, because I'm bringing judgment on those who I'm telling to get their houses in order and they're not. 